Thank you. Alrighty, our agenda for today is going to be talking through the purpose of these grants, eligibility requirements, our process and timeline for this year, and then we'll actually take a little break there. If you are very familiar with our online grants portal, you won't need to stay through the walkthrough of that. Um, but otherwise, we'll do kind of a, a deep dive walkthrough of the portal itself, how to use that. And then we'll have time for Q&A at the end. But again, throughout, if you have questions, go ahead and stop me. Let me know. So we're going to dig right out. Oh, and we will not take a full hour unless we have like a million questions. It will not be an hour. <laughs> so you'll get some time back in your day too. <laughs> so to start, I want to kind of let you know where to find the information that you're going to need. So on our website, which is cfjc.org, there's a couple places right from the home screen. You can find everything you need to know. So our slider, this pretty graphic right here, um, if you click anywhere on that slider or on the learn more button, you'll be led to the grants page. The other option is at the top on our toolbar, there's a word granting. That's a menu drop down. If you click on that guy, there will be a drop down. You'll have to click granting again and then uh, 2023 community grants is where you'll find our information. So the slider rotates, it might not always be the first one on your screen, which is why we have a second place you can go. Um, but there should always be a couple options there for you to find the grants page. Once you click on either that slider or the granting drop down, it will lead you to this page. This page has all of the information I'm going to walk through today and a bunch more resources. We'll talk through what those are um, in this session here. But Really, everything you should need to know, hopefully, is on the website for you that you can access anytime. The big piece that I want to mention about this web page specifically, this apply now button is where you'll go to get to the grants portal. We often have confusion. My fund login, which is always at the top, is not the grants portal. Your login will not work there. That is a donor portal for our donors. Um, so not this upper my fund login that's crossed out yes to this apply now button <laughs> so that's where you'll find the application um, you also can get in to do your grant reporting there as well so that is kind of the layout of the screen you will also notice it says please read the information on this page thoroughly before you apply um, because you're on this call you'll also hear all of the eligibility all of those requirements you'll have a handle of kind of what we're looking for um, but there is a lot of great information on the website so please do take a look at that Make sure you feel familiar before you get into the application. Um, we don't want to waste anyone's time, so we want you to know all of the requirements and eligibility before you hop in and, and start writing. Any questions on the website piece where to access? Okay, perfect. So the purpose of these grants is really just to provide financial support for Johnson County nonprofits. So any 501c3 government entity, we'll go into that in a minute, um, but we're just providing general financial support. So that can be in the form of operating support or program support. And our max award is gonna be $10,000. So that's good for you to know. So you can kind of right size your ask, your request. Um, 10,000 and under is what we'll be funding. So the difference between the two, we do ask that you only choose one application. So either a program support or an operating support for each organization. Program support requests are gonna be around a particular program or a project. Um, so those are going to be in our six interest areas. We've got arts and culture, education, environment and animals, health, human services, and public and societal benefit. If you're not sure where you live within those categories, let me know. We can talk through that and kind of find your best fit. Um, but really, anywhere in those six is great. It should cover everyone. So those particular programs are going to be things like a community trail, um, we need specific supplies for our kindergarten reading program, those types of requests. Operating support is going to be a whole lot more broad. So that's going to be general operations. Um, you know, you can use it for your rent, your utilities, your staff salaries, um, really anything to just keep your mission moving forward. So those two applications do look a little bit different. They ask different questions because they're for different kinds of support, right? Um, so you can read through those applications on the website. There's a read only of each one. So you can check those out before you even log into the system, before you get set up, figure out which one might fit. Again, if you have questions about fit, let me know. We can talk through that and figure out where you, where you might wanna be. Before you ask, we do generally fund within both buckets. So we have a kind of complex 
calculation that luckily our CFO does for me. Um, but that kind of determines the amount of money we have and where it where it gets kind of divided out. So we will fund in all six interest areas and we will fund both operating and program support for all six areas. Um, so just, just know that going in, there are buckets of money for each type of, of application. Questions on the difference between program and operating support? Okay. So eligibility generally, um, these are rules given to us by the IRS. <laughs> so we have to, grant to section 501c3 um, organizations. We also can grant a fiscal sponsorship. So if you have a charitable program that is supported through a fiscal sponsorship that works for us, we can do that. Um, we can also do government entities, schools, um, a couple other things. If you are wondering if you're eligible, let me know before you get into the app um, and then we can figure out a, a way to get in. Um, the other pieces that you must be located in or significantly serving Johnson County. Again, if you have questions about what that means or if that is you, let me know. Generally, I think most folks who are on the call, I think everyone who's on the call, is either in Johnson County or serving Johnson County. So you should be good to go there. But again, questions, just reach out. We can talk through that. So our process and timeline this year looks very similar to last year. We have today's info session, nice work, cross that one off. Um, we do also have an info session in July, so during the application cycle. That way, once you're in your app, if you have questions that are specific, we can get those addressed. I do wanna note, we changed the time on that one. So it used to be in the afternoon. Now we're gonna move it to evening. So that's gonna be at 7 p.m. That is an effort to kind of make sure we're able to hit those folks who are volunteers who write grant applications, who might have a full-time job. Um, and wouldn't be able to be on this call because they're at their other job. Uh, so that that one is going to be at 7 p.m. We'll chat about that at the end again, too. But our applications will be open July 1 through the 31st. So you've got a full month to get them completed. They are very short. It should hopefully not be too challenging. Um, and tentatively, our grant celebration and awards will be October 17th. So those are the big dates for you to know. Um, that timeline is out on our website. Hopefully you got that in an email as well if you're on our newsletter list. Um, but let us know if you have questions or concerns about any of that. All right, I do wanna make sure that I hit this piece specifically. So we have a specific commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in our grant making at the Community Foundation. This is our grant making as a whole, um, but specifically our competitive grant cycle. We have a lot of different ways we kind of try to be equitable. So one of those is an offering, offering our operating support. We really try um, to split, as I said, our funds into kind of both. So we're able to support especially new and growing organizations. We provide these info sessions. So hopefully we're very clear on the expectations and criteria of the process. We use a short application. For the most part, it's contact info, ways we can get a hold of you, and then just a few questions to really bring across what you're trying to do. We split our resources into the six interest areas. So we're not only funding arts or only funding health for the year. Uh, we try to fund across all areas. We also limit one application per organization. This helps so that those really big organizations who have specific grant writers can't just put in 30 applications and volunteer orgs um, might only have time to get one. And so we limit everyone to one, pick your one thing, um, and we'll, we'll look at it from there. We also use a community review team. So I'll talk through how that process works in a moment, but we try to use a diverse background of folks from kind of different sectors. We give them a training so they know what they're looking for, um, but it really helps uh, to have those folks look at the applications. So it's not just our small grants team doing that year after year. We also don't require matching funds. So none of our grants re require a match of any kind, um, in kind or cash. We also don't use a reimbursement plan. So we will pay one award, one check right at the beginning. Um, so you have that to use for your full project. We don't do kind of payback. So those are some of the ways that we try to commit to diversity, equity, and inclusion in our grant making. If you have questions about that, let me know. Um, or obviously you can ask right now. Uh, but those are some things that we try to do to remain equitable to everybody. So our internal process, I wanted to give you just kind of a background of what it looks like on our end, mostly so you know why it takes from July 31 to October to give you um, those award decisions. 
And really the reason is we're going through a lot of different channels. So we start with our info sessions, we ask questions, kind of get our process out there so folks know what's going on. Then our applications are open for the month of July. Those applications will move on through a quick staff vetting. Um, that's really our IRS vet. Are you a 501c3? Are you in Johnson County? Those pieces. Then those applications move on to our community reviewers. So those reviewers have a couple of weeks to evaluate. They look through everything. They read your application in detail. And they, in teams, make grant recommendations. Those recommendations move on to our grants committee, who look through them again, evaluate, finalize, make sure all of our math is right. And then that moves on to our board of directors for approval. So kind of a three-stage um, review process there. So we're getting a lot of info, input from different folks. The other piece that's interesting that we do is we try to align our donors. So we have a lot of DAFs is what we call them, but donor advised funds held here at the Community Foundation. Um, and we really try to work to get personalized giving opportunities for those donors. We do that alongside of our grants for a couple of reasons. One, it personalizes their giving, right? We're able to give them specific requests. They know of the need in the community. Um, but it also means that you don't have to ask like a gazillion times to get something funded. We try to get donors to come alongside us in funding requests that we can't fully fund. So the, the whole point is to amplify, excuse me, amplify our impact um, by getting those donors to come alongside us and really kind of sharing the needs that we have in our community. So that piece is happening on the back end. That's not something that you guys have to worry about at all. We do that from the staff side. Um, but you might see in your grant check or your grant award that it's coming from multiple donors. That's kind of that process. That's why that happens. Questions on any of how the process itself works? Okay. So once you've decided that you are eligible and you want to submit an application, on our webpage, this is just scrolled down from that original grant page, there are a lot of resources for you. Um, so it kind of gives you just a general, hey, here's what you might want to have handy when you're doing your application. Those pieces are all kind of on that left-hand side there. But then there's links to a bunch of different things that are helpful. So we still have up last year's grants info session until today's is over and we'll switch that over to this year's. Um, we do have the two read-only applications. So you can look through those questions, see what you might want to do, which ones, what you might need, all of those pieces. Um, so you can look at those ahead of time without getting into the grant system itself. We also have an application walkthrough. We've got video and written tutorials for the grants portal itself. So if you get confused or you're like, ah, I'm not sure where that button was, you can check there. Um, and we also have some portal tips that are just kind of things that people ask us frequently. So that all lives on the website all the time. You can look at that whenever you need to. So our resources, again, are going to be all of those items on the website. The website's your best place to start. We also will do announcements and reminders through our e-newsletter. So make sure you follow that if you don't already. Shoot me an email at ellie at cfjc.org if you want to be added to that list. Um, and then follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll have announcements and application links, all of those pieces there as well. And of course, our staff is always welcome to you. We're always available. So reach out if you have questions or concerns and we can help you through those. Okay, before we hop into our grants portal, I wanna give some updates and summer info for those who might not wanna stick on for the portal itself. We do still have applications open for community reviewers. You are able as a grant applicant to be a reviewer. Basically what we do is put you in a section that your application will not be in. So you won't be reviewing your own application or your own kind of area, interest area, you'll be in a different one. But those applications close June 30th. You can find that info on our Facebook page. I think we posted about it again yesterday. Um, so check that out if you're interested in that and shoot that out to friends, family, coworkers, anyone you think might uh, be interested in being a community grants reviewer. We also had a time change, as I mentioned before, our grants info session for July is moving to 7 p.m. So we'll see you at seven if you hop on the other one. Um, again, it'll be kind of this same information. And then if someone has a specific question, once they're in the grants portal, we'll, we'll handle those as well. I also want to invite you to our celebration of giving event. So on June 28th from five to seven, we'll be at Terry Trueblood. 
Um, we do have to RSVP because there's food involved. <laughs> that way, if you wouldn't mind RSVPing to Cassie um, or online, we have kind of a news post with that information for you. Uh, but you're all welcome to attend that event. It's going to be great fun just celebrating. It's, it's our end of year. We have a fiscal year, so we're celebrating this past year. And then we'll be around the summer. We're going to be at Corval Fourth Fest, North Liberty Blues and Barbecue, and Soul and Beef Days. So if you are there, come find us. We'd love to see you. Okay, at this point, I'm going to pause. If anyone has questions about that first half, now is a great time. And if you are very familiar with our grants portal, you don't need to stick around for the walkthrough. Um, you are welcome to, but don't need to. So I will pause for a minute and let you ask questions. Ellie, can I ask a question? This is Haley. Of course. Awesome. So with the program and operating support, with the community reviewers, do they, you know, kind of have a formula they look at like 50% program, 50% operations, or does it really just kind of depend on what proposals get submitted? Yeah. So the they look at both. Um, each interest area will look at both program and operating they're looking at them within each section, right? So they look at the program ones against each other, rank them. They look at the operating ones against each other, rank them. Um, the way that our budget is determined is a crazy <laughs> calculation, um, but that involves what is being requested. So there's kind of a, it's kind of right size to how many applications we get in, what the amount requested is, and then how much funds we have. So it's kind of allocated toward where need is, if that makes sense. Um, but there is a bucket for each one of those. Does that answer your question? It does. And can I ask just a quick follow-up question? Kind of overall with this, you know, calculation, does it seem like the foundation and the reviewers like try to fund as many requests as possible, just possibly at a reduced portion or just try to find the most, you know, highest impact grant amounts? Yeah, that's a really great question. So we are trying to move toward higher impact, fewer, larger grants. Um, for the most part, we try to fully fund requests. When we can't, that's when our donors step in. Um, so we might have like just an extra $2,000 in our bucket and we need to use it. Um, we want to use it in that bucket, but the request is $10,000. So then we'll bring in our donor advised fund holders and see if they might fully fund the rest of that request. Um, we do take a look at, is this feasible without, right? So like, if we only have $2,000 and your request is 10 and it's not feasible to do the project with $2,000, um, often that's a reach out to say, hey, we can't fully fund this. Is it helpful to you if we fund the $2,000? Or does that put you in the situation where you have to go out and find the rest of that funding, right? Um, so that is kind of a conversation then. We, we figure it out, it's a big puzzle, um, but for the most part, we're going for higher impact, bigger grants. All right, other questions? Anything else at this point? Uh, this is Ron Almitra, just a quick question. So the read only 2023 application <clears throat> right now is, that's exactly what we'll be, that we'll be applying through when the portal opens, those are the same questions. Correct, yep. Okay. Awesome, yep, nothing should change on there. It should be, should be correct. If you see a typo, let me know. <laughs> All right, anything else at this point? Okay, super. Well, if you wanna hang around for Grants Portal walkthrough, I'll go through that now. It'll just be another couple of minutes. So we'll dig right into that. So our grants portal, once you hit that apply button, this is what it will bring you to. Um, there's a couple nuances about this page. So if you already have a login and already know your login, great. Put in your email address, your password, login, get going. That's perfect. If you don't have a login, but know that someone in your organization does, email me, call me, contact me in some way. Um, the system does not like when you reuse an EIN. So basically what happens is there's one organizational account using your EIN, then we can have multiple users under that, but that has to be set up on my side. Um, so we'll have to do a new account for you. It's very easy, it's very quick. 
it's not a problem. I'm happy to set you up with a new one. Um, but if your organization already has an account, if your EIN's already been used in the system, reach out to me, let me know. It also should stop you. I think the system itself will stop you if the EIN's already in use and remind you to reach out to me. Um, but that is kind of a, a nuanced piece there. If you know for sure your EIN hasn't been used, you can go ahead and click create new account the first time you log in and it'll get you all set up. Um, so you can do it on your own if there's a new one, but if your EIN's already been used, let me know and we'll get your user login set up. Does that make sense? That's kind of a, that's kind of a interesting piece of the portal. Okay, so if you are creating a new account, will bring you to this page. Um, very easy. Pretty much everything in the portal looks like this, right? You just type in the boxes you need your info in, um, and there will always be a kind of next or submit button that's blue. The pieces that you have to have that are required will have an asterisk. Anything else you don't necessarily need to put in. So just know that as you're going through as well. Um, then it will have you create your user. So this is also what I would be doing on the back end if you already have an account. But the user account, really big important part is the email. So your email is gonna be your username. It's also the email the system uses for all of our kind of conversation with you, right? So if we have grant report reminders, the award information is all gonna go to this email. So use an email that you actually check <laughs> that you have access to. Um, that's my one kind of piece on creating your user. Use a good email that, that works and that you can see. So again, fill out your boxes, anything asterisk is required. And then it will ask you to confirm your email. Um, again, for those same reasons, right? Our award information is going there. A lot of reminders will go there. Um, so make sure that you confirm that email and that it's working. You typed it in correctly. All those pieces are good. And if you need to change your email, let me know. I can change your email on your account as well. So your username can, can change. So once you've either created your account or just logged in, you had your login information, you should come to a page that looks somewhat like this. Um, the big piece is to know this home button will always bring you back to this dashboard navigation. It will always bring you back to this page. And this apply button is where you're gonna go to find new applications that you have not yet started. So the first time you log in, the first time you go to start your 2023 grants, you'll hit this apply button. They'll show up a little bit like this baby tiger grant application does. Um, so check out that process name. That's where you'll need to choose either operating or program. Start one of those, um, whichever one fits your, your application better. Um, and then they all will appear on your dashboard like this. So it will show up as though you're part of it. It shows you the process name so you know what year you're in. You might have a 2019 one in there. You might have a 2022. Um, the way you can tell that is the process, but also it will show you what status it's in. So this baby tiger grant application is in a draft status. Your 2021 or 2022 grants would be in a report status. Um, and then kind of where you are on your editing side will be here. So you can edit your application. If you were in a report status, it would say edit report or submit report. Um, so that's kind of where you'll go in. So if you're in the system, you started the application, you save it, you get back out. When you come back in, it'll lead you to this dashboard and you'll just hit edit application, and get back into where you were. So that's kind of your dashboard navigation. You can always come back to home and find your find where you're at again. Um, it does auto save every about 20 minutes, but you can save at the bottom. We'll show you that um, here in a minute, but make sure you're saving. It does save every 20 minutes, but that's kind of a long time. So make sure you're hitting save yourself as well. Okay. So once you hit that edit application or you hit apply for the first time, your application will come up. This is obviously an example. We don't have a baby tiger grant app, unfortunately, um, but it will show the information you've already put in as your user information, your organization information, all of that kind of auto populates for you. It's just these boxes in the actual request that you'll see you just need to enter um, kind of whatever it's asking for there. It does tell you what you need to enter and character accounts for everything. All of those pieces are in the system itself. One other thing I wanna note here is you are able to download your packet. So application packet will download a PDF version of your application for you to save that does include your answers. Question list 
will download the questions on the application, but not your answers. So that's the difference between those two. Um, but you're able to save that. Of course, you can always get back in and look at your application. You should be able to look back at previous requests. Um, so you do have access to them. But if you want a printed copy, this application packet button will, will print out your PDF. As you're going, as you fill things out, make sure to hit save a bunch of times and wait to hit submit until you are sure you are ready. Um, it does not let you get back in and edit after you have hit submit. So submit is your final, I am done, I'm sending it off. Um, save, you can do throughout and get back into it. So that's that piece. And I think that's all I've got for you. Any other questions? Anything I missed? Anything about the portal that's confusing? Looks funky. Did I miss anything in the chat? My portal looks a little bit uh, different than the one on there, but I think I'm in the right spot. I see like right now the 2023-2024 Iowa Women's Foundation core grants yep. that's closed. Okay, great. Thank you. Perfect. Yep. So it does look a little bit different. It should also be branded. Our little logo should be there instead of fountains. Um, and that is actually a great point, Joseph. So right now we are administering grants for the Iowa Women's Foundation as well. So when you go into the hit that apply button, there's a bunch of different options there. It should still show last year's. It might show that Women's Foundation. It shows Coralville's grants. Um, so just be sure as you're clicking which process you want that you're clicking the 2023 community grants process um, and then either operating or program. So that's a that's a good thing to know, Joseph. Those those Iowa Women's Foundation ones are closed, but we do administer those for them. Any other questions, concerns? I've got one and I apologize. I was having technical difficulties. So I logged on a bit late. So you may have already addressed this, but I was curious if you could speak to if how um, the 522 for good um, grants might work alongside um, these that's, upcoming applications. That's a really great question. And I did not address that. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, yes, 522 for good is a giving organization. We are their fiscal sponsor, so they're part of the community foundation, but a separate organization and entity. Um, their information's on our website if you want to check that out. But each year they hold their own granting cycle. So they have, um, it's a membership organization. Basically their membership dues turn into grants, which is really cool. Um, and every year they choose a specific topic for what they will be granting toward for that year. Um, I believe this year is maybe children, I think. Um, so it's kind of kids issues. The way that it works on the back end is that you apply, if you're applying for a, a 5 for Good grant, you're just applying for our community grants. So basically what happens is any application that comes in that is around their current area of focus. So um, a couple of years ago, they did environment and animals. So any application that came in through our cycle that had something to do with environment and animals, we would pass on to them for them to look at, to fund as well. Um, so it's very similar to the donor advised funds, how we do those. It's kind of like trying to align our giving and create more impact. Um, but what happens in 5 for Goods case is they take a look at those applications that fit in their bucket before, um, actually at the same time as our evaluators who look at them. And then they'll let us know what things they're going to fund. And we can shift our funding around to fund other things or fully fund what they can't. Um, so really, it's just... Oh, thank you, Jessica. Food insecurity is this year's grand focus for Five to Two for Good. <laughs> That's what they're doing this year. Um, so if your grant is in that kind of arena, we'll pass it along to them to have them take a look at it and fund as well. But their funding is technically separate from our funding. We just don't want you to have to apply twice. Does that make sense, Kelsey? That was kind of a lot. It does. Yeah, that's really helpful. Um, and just to make sure I'm crystal clear then, um, is there any chance if we were to submit a project that aligned with 5224 goods priorities to receive above the 10,000 or would the 10,000 limit essentially it could be partial 5224 good partial Correct. community foundation okay yep. thank you so it wouldn't be above the 10,000 either way 
So Ellie, I had a similar question um, relating to multiple funding through kind of your org. Um, the Coral Endowment, which is a different cycle, yep. is, that's completely separate than since it's on a different cycle, or how does that work? Correct. That one is completely separate. Um, Coralville has enough funds that they're able to run their own cycle specific to Coralville. So that just ended. Um, we just did their grant checks, I think this week, actually. Um, but they do their own cycle. However, we often try to involve our other community funds. So we've got a North Liberty Fund, we've got a Lone Tree Fund. Um, other funds will shoot applications that are in their area to them but we don't have control over whether or not they fund it. We just try to get additional funding that way. Um, so Coralville is the one that is different because they do their own funding, yep. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, anything else? Super, well, thanks for hopping in and joining us. Hopefully we answered all your questions. If you do have anything residual or you get into the system and something's confusing, shoot me an email, give us a call. Um, we can get that answer for you, but otherwise we'll give you back about 20 minutes. We won't tell anyone, so do whatever you need to with it and have a great day. Thanks guys. Thank you.